Hello guys and welcome back to TNT Madness. So today we're going to be explaining how hammers work. So this has been requested forever and I'm going to be starting a new series called TNT In Depth because there are lots of things that need to be covered. For this episode it's going to be hammers and there's lots of other things like hy how hybrid cannon how hybrid cannons work, how sand stackers work, all sorts of things. So today we're just going to be going over how the basics of how hammers work and how they allow sand stackers to work and how they make slab busters work and why they're so useful. So we're going to be going over that today. So to start off with, essentially what a hammer is, is you'll have your base amount of TNT down here, but what a hammer is, is it's pretty much like a TNT cannon on top of it, so it's like secondary propellant because what we have here is we've got an extra layer on top that is one block higher than the rest of the barrel so this allows this part of the TNT to fly along the very top while the rest of the TNT flies equal along to here we just have this iron slab here, iron trap door so it flies slightly lower and the reason for this is because hammers work as a secondary propellant pretty much because when we hit a wall if we go over here it will fire, let's say here, your main propellant will fire here, and your hammer propellant will fire over here. So what will happen is you'll have a giant clump of TNT firing over here, and then when this explodes, it will furiously fire the TNT or sand or whatever it is straight down. So this is extremely beneficial as it allows us to slab bust from great heights. So let's say we're 200 blocks up, and we need to sand stack for some reason to get our hybrid cannon working. Then we can use it, a lean archer cannon like the one I did about a month ago. And it can fire straight down, destroy all the slabs, and then you can go ahead and start sand stacking. So how it affects sand stacking is it does it pretty much the same way. But instead of having sand stack one by one because you can't stack multiple TNT unless you have it firing down on the same tick. And what I mean by that is when the sand gets fired down by this, you have all your sand in a massive clump, like all together, like 50 sand in one block. And what happens is your giant block of TNT will fire it down, but it'll fire it down in like one game tick. So then it will fire it all down, and then the game will register after one game tick that all that sand is there. So instead of registering it at one spot, it'll just stack it on top of each other. So the way this is done is the bigger, the larger amount of TNT you have, the faster it can propel it down. So the more sand you can stack essentially. It's a wee bit more complicated than that, but it's essentially like that because sometimes you might have it off accuracy or something. But for the main part, that's how sand stackers work. So there are two ways that a hammer can work. One, you can have a normal TNT cannon thing like this, except with less dispensers, and then one put on top, which would make it two, two TNT cannons essentially in one. But this is really inefficient as you use a lot more TNT and you have to set up two TNT cannons in one spot. So what people do have that has as they have set up a system where they have it one block higher like I said earlier but the problem with this is it has to fire further and once we get over to here it's about four blocks from where the TNT actually is so the problem with this is that we need more propellant to fire at the same spot so that's where this compressor design actually came up from because you will have a giant amount of TNT but then this back thing will push it all the way up to the slab or in this case in 1.8.8 it'll fire it all the way up to the fence because only fences work for some reason so it'll push it all the way up so that way it can still fire all the propellant on the very top in a very accurate straight line and same with the bottom so that way you get the same effect that you get on there so this is great in that retrospect. So if you're wondering what these tiny piston things are here, is they are piston aligners and they are essential for how hammers work because if you don't have these then you will not have an accurate cannon. And when I was a noob at TNT cannons, about even like six months ago, I forgot about these completely. So what happens is TNT is 0.98 blocks wide. So this causes a huge problem is it can be point two blocks to one side so in this instant if this TNT here the TNT that is here it could be on the right side and your hammer of course since the piston is pushing it left it'll be on the left so then the TNT will go all the way up there but it'll actually fire off the TNT that's going up here way down off the side which is definitely not what you want so what happens is you have to get these piston aligners that after all the TNT is dispensed pushes all the TNT to the left side so it's equal with everything else so all your sand stackers, everything is on the left side. That includes your propellant because that way if it fires it on the right side then the thing could fire too far left. 
So there are many issues, but the one thing you have to make sure is you have a piston aligner whenever you are adding TNT anywhere. So that's one major problem that a lot of people miss out on. So what we have here is pretty much a common setup that you'd have for a Lee and Archer cannon, except this one is slightly more compact than most, and this is pretty much exactly what I had for my Lee and Archer, except there was a dispenser facing up the top there, and this hammer was actually larger so it could fire more sand down. And I know it could probably fire more sand down, but like I said, it could consistently fire sand down. It can fire more. It doesn't matter. We're not talking about Lee and Archer here. So this one is slightly different, as, as you can see on this one, it has one iron, iron trap door and the reason for that is so you just have slightly more distance between the top and the bottom so that just allows us for it to be more effective as a propellant because the closer it is the more problems it can actually get and make it less accurate so I just do this as a precaution and if it's wood door you can do that wooden trap doors but I prefer iron trap doors just because it's very helpful so that's this one is actually free longer so that's why you see like my Leon Archer cannon being so massive and the reason it has to be free long is because we still have our piston aligners, but then we have our sand stacker here, and unfortunately we can't have it in line here with this, because we could have it on the other side, but then we have to set up an extra piston liner, and that will take up a whole lot of space, and it's not exactly easy to do it with sand, it's actually really hard. And the problem with this is if we had the sand here, where, where this dispenser is here, then the TNT could actually flop out the side and blow up your whole cannon, so that wouldn't make you very happy. So that's the only reason it has to be free blocks longer. And the only real issue this causes is that we have to have slightly more propellant so I can fire it further in an accurate line. And it's actually a really simple rule. The further you are flying, you just need more fire, so more firing power. So it's pretty much simple brute force in that respect. So that's one major thing. Also, if you're wondering why the barrel isn't just one block wide and it's actually two, that's so if it slips out forward or something, it doesn't slip out by a block or so. And it's really helpful to have two. You don't actually need any more than two if you're having a longer barrel. Because if for some reason your thing's not accurate, then you might not have a piston aligner. If you have to make it longer than two blocks, then there's probably something wrong. It's also good because the dispensers generally line up. So that's pretty much how these work. And if you want to see an in-depth tutorial, or actually something that uses these really well, then go have a look at my Leon Arch Cannon, because you can see that and how it works with all its hammers. And I go in-depth, and you can see how it actually fires down the sand and how it slab busts. And it's just really good video if you want to see an actual proper full-on Leon Arch Cannon work. So this is pretty much everything I can tell you. There's probably a lot more about these, and there are probably I could probably go more in-depth. But I just wanted to get the basics done and just pretty much everything that you need to know. So this is pretty much everything you'll need to know, or at least if you're starting off. Unless you're making something that's massive, these are probably just going to be the general rules that you need to remember. And I'm sure if you're making your own cannons, you'll have a successful time. So anyway, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, please leave a like. If you really liked it, hit that subscribe button. But anyway, goodbye from TNT Madness. <laughs>